Okay, uh, let me introduce you <laughs> properly. So, uh, Dr. Fiona Murphy is publisher for Earth and, and Environmental Science Journals at uh, Wiley, working with a number of title societies and other publishing partners. She's also increasingly involved with emerging initiatives that promote good management practices of research data, so uh, good thing, including use, reuse, citation, and linking with primary publications. Most significantly, the Preparde, uh, projects um, and among other activities she's also a member of the STM Association Research Data Group and the WDS RDA Data Publishing uh, Publication Working Group. Okay, I see that she's ready. Um, do you like to switch the slides? Or if you just start. Thank you very much, Inga. Um, thank you very much for um, the invitation to, to come here today. Um, I'm aware, as was just said, that um, I'm what's between you and lunch, so I will try to be brisk, I guess. <laughs> Someone's left their phone, yeah. Right, so um, I think the, the, the brief that um, I read and the, the talk I want to give today um, is, again, around data publication, so hopefully it won't duplicate too much what's, what's already, already been mentioned. Um, I wanted to talk about it from, from obviously my point of view as, as a publisher, but um, given the, the audience and the, the, um, the mission for this particular workshop, um, I wanted to also draw some, some parallels between, between ourselves as um, any support stakeholders in um, the research communication sort of ecosystem. So first of all, um, I put together a couple of slides. I wasn't sure what people before me would be covering, so um, just to make sure that, that we're all on the same page. I think Peggy in particular um, has, has covered this reasonably well. Um, so from, from my point of view, um, publishing data is analogous to, but not exactly the same as publishing primary research um, insofar as um, if something is published, if a data set is published, it, it then can be republished in a slightly altered format if, say, it's around a long-term observational data set. Um, Absolutely, we need uh, a long-term um, archiving uh, situation in a reliable repository um, with a persistent identifier, which might be a DOI or it might be um, another mechanism such as a URI. And, and I think this is really critical, is um, a level of metadata to allow discoverability, um, hopefully reuse, um, and hopefully, hopefully um, just really kind of highlight what, what is actually sitting there. So, and why would we do it? Um, initially, um, academic credit for, um, for the people that, that have, have created and managed the data um, and has also um, emerged already today. Um, there isn't really a standard way of, of deciding who's an author of a data set, and I think that's some, some work that um, someone needs to do at some point. Um, yeah, so you publish data in order to be able to um, feel comfortable that it's going, to, it's going to remain, it's going to stay, you're going to be able to find it again. Um, peer review, which I think hasn't been mentioned so much. I mean, it's partly a, um, the, a quality check for the, the, the data set itself, that, it, that, you know, that the correct fields are um, filled in, that um, you haven't got a corrupt file. Um, but it's also um, by, by plugging um, a data set into the, the, primary, you know, the scholarly research ecosystem, you're, you're extending that um, that system whereby people are, are looking at to check it to see what the scientific content is and, and you know that that's valuable too and I think as also um, was mentioned in the keynote um, ideally um, the level of metadata the discoverability of the of the data set should um, then promote its its understanding and use by people who aren't imme immediately in that that circle of, of charm people who knew about it beforehand Transparency, I think that's particularly important um, given, again, the, the, the way that, um, that, that policy and conversations are going about, about how research, how innovation need to be conducted and how um, increasingly that the public are aware that they're funding and, um, and need to you know, benefit from, from the research. Yeah, and because of the money. Um, I think, again, increasingly, um, you know, various jurisdictions are um, are becoming more and more active and saying, you know, this uh, the, the research data is a, is a is a valuable commodity in terms of commercial 
um, and also um, you know research innovation terms and um, you know increasingly the, the funder mandates are, are becoming more crystal around actually people have you know, people are going to have to spend some time thinking about where the data go um, at the beginning of the, of the proposal and at the end and the reuse is going to be increasingly important as well um, so I've put the yes, the NSF, um, the White House uh, for the US, um, also the Horizon 2020, which I know will be a, a key um, horizon for a number of people here. Um, I also mentioned the Sciences and Open Enterprise report, which has um, been very um, influential, certainly, um, in the UK. And, um, and it, it seems to indicate the way that, that um, the wind is blowing in terms, in terms of access to and um, behavior around um, science and, and research generally. Um, Jeffrey Bolton, who's the, the lead author of this report, um, emphasizes within it the critical place that librarians should have within, within this future. Um, I have heard him um, proclaim at a, at a meeting with a you know, completely different set of people that the wrong people were in the libraries which um, I thought was really harsh, actually. But um, I think re revisiting the, the whole um, uh, tenant of his talk, looking at the report and, and seeing the way that the, the, the uh, interpretations have been coming out since then, I think what um, is supposed to be interpreted is that, you know, clearly, you know, a, a huge, huge number of extremely capable and the right people are within the library. But like a number of us who are key stakeholders in the, um, in this, uh, the scholarly research system, um, we need to be interrogating our, our current workflows and our deliverables and our skill sets and be open to, to possibilities of, of adaptation and, and just changing some of the things we, we do um, as open access and open data you know, converge with, with other movements to this new world of open science or open research. Um, you know, creation, um, for instance, I think the emphasis changes from, from maximizing sort of access to, for your institution to maximizing you know, efficiency, um, discoverability, and also trust, I think, because an, an open world is also potentially an unruly world, and, um, and I think people can, can get lost and confused by that. Um, I also wanted to mention that um, Susan Riley of, of LIBA um, was, was also at the meeting that Peggy mentioned last week um, in Oxford, and um, I think she, she made a sterling case for, for the, the, the pivotal place that, that librarians um, play as research data management um, stakeholders. Um, I think in particular she, she pointed out that um, you're part of the institution. Um, people, are, people are there, right? they actually, they're, they're on the premises, they're, they're part of the, the current research infrastructure, which is what, which is what needs to be built upon. Um, they're trusted knowledge management partners and, and you know, the, the personal or departmental relationships I think are there, are there to be um, grown and explored. So, as a as a publisher, I'm I'm very used to the um, uh, so the narrative of a, ch of a changed paradigm because um, that, as a publisher, that's the kind of conversation we've been having internally as well. Um, and I think the question is how to embrace change and new technologies, new business models, um, without being it's a UK phrase a turkey voting for Christmas. Um, so. Um, I wanted to share with this with you. It's, it's a diagram we've been we've been um, sort of staring at for a, for a while in, internally. Um, as you can see, research, the workflow is the bullseye around it, uh, and around it we've got a, a cycle of the, the, the different stages that um, the researcher would, would go through in in um, in terms of, of beginning um, and to, to completion of, of a project, and then we've got the I guess the, the, the name of that process that takes them from stage to stage. And then we actually broke that down to, I guess, the, the more kind of concrete tasks, the, the, the nitty gritty that, that each one actually involves going through. And um, I think as, as publishers, we were a bit um, <laughs> chastised in internally to think that we were only really um, occupying space on like the bottom left and a bit on the top left kind of quadrants. We're coming in right at the end. Of, of the process and, and we feel that actually something that we, we are going to be looking at a lot more is is taking um, you know all these all these stages and thinking well what what can we do to support what in, in this future that's going to look different um, you know what what points of interaction um, can we have and I guess um, I, I would hope that that would be something that's useful for, for librarians to, to think around as well um, I think different um, institutions departments um, people 
are going to have um, different experiences, I mean, clearly. But um, I think given um, how much of this is around, is around workflows and, and research data, um, it's, it's possible, I think, for a number, a number of li librarians to, um, to think, well, actually, you know, can we systematically be more involved and supportive and, you know, and, sp and enhance the impact of our um, institution by, by, becoming, by becoming partners in this? Um, and again, um, I think some of the, the us ideas that could come out of that, which have been mentioned before, which I think, by mentioning them myself, hopefully they help with building the case. Um, data management proposal, um, planning at proposal stage, you know, consulting um, with researchers as they have to produce data management plan as part of their, their, their funding proposal. Um, compliance with funder mandates um, for data management and for publication practices as well. I mean, this, this is also something I know the RC UK, for instance, is, is going to start um, requiring um, a data accessibility statement as part, as part of um, all their funded research outputs, um, which I think again Peggy, Peggy mentioned. So I think these are going to have to be standardized and researchers are going to have to know what format, which journals, you know, how do they go about doing this. Um, I think also building um, policies and, and, and best practices um, and um, you know, build, building up from, from pilots or from other knowledge. Um, I mean, people, are, people have been able historically to ignore a lot of the, say, open access or, or other um, sort of scholarly communication debates, but not anymore. I think researchers are, are going to be, you know, they're going to have to engage with these or they're not going to be able to build a, a, a proper career. So um, I wanted to show you, I suppose, some of the things that, that are already out there. Obviously, open air, um, I think, is, is, um, is, a, is a very key, key um, project, very, very um, important, and is, is doing some, some interesting things. Opportunities for Data Exchange has closed now, but it was a, it was a project where um, librarians, publishers, data centers, and researchers um, came together to think about um, sort of data, research data, data publication issues. Um, they, Defined to find some of the drivers, some of the barriers um, to progress. They built up some case studies and they, they, pro they projected, they, they, they thought about what might happen in the future and how each of those, each of those stakeholders um, might find a place. Um, there's a very good website actually if you, um, if you Google that. Um, another one uh, that's actually ongoing, Sim for RDM, which is, oh, I've got this down, support infrastructure models for research data management. As you see, it's, um, it's in the run-up to Horizon 2020, they're looking to um, um, support researchers' um, you know, effective knowledge of data infrastructures. And again, they, they're going to ne need support, and then they're going to need skills, or they're going to need to be able to call upon other people's skills um, in order, in order to, to maximize their own impact and that of their, their institution and projects. So I also wanted to um, give honorable mention to the Australian National Data Service, um, I think do a you know, very, very active. They, they have a webinar series which you can, you can download from YouTube. Um, they've got a great website, very clear mission about you know, supporting reuse, um, curation, archiving of, of data. They've got a lot of really nice kind of short explanatory guides just defining things and give you, giving you sort of somewhere to go to, to look for things. And, and they're also, you know, have a really international um, outlook. So, um, so, what do publishers do? Um, before going to mention this one, I wanted to just also say that um, you know, there are, as you may have well noticed, um, a number of, of, of data journals, data products um, coming out recently. Um, the Faculty of a Thousand has brought out F1000 Research. Um, Nature has just announced the launch of scientific data. Um, Hindawi um, is also um, launched, has some new data journals. Um, Biomed Central a couple of years ago launched Giga Science, um, so it, it, it's basically something that, that the publishers feel you know we're feeling the need to respond to. It's, it's something again that we we see um, require it requiring response from us. So Geoscience Data Journal is the is the, the Wiley version. Um, so it's we publish it with uh, one of our partners, the Royal Meteorological Society, um, and we had some support from NERC, which again someone's mentioned already, um, the Natural Environment Research Council, in particular the British Atmospheric Data Centre. Um, so it, it's partly in, in terms of um, helping find and identify a good editor, um, partly in um, so supporting the general mission. I mean, we had, we had a lot of um, encouraging noises 
from them. That this was a, a good a good way to help support again impact, measurable impact of of research, um, and they, they, they just want to be able to. Um, Support, you know, guide people, you know, encourage them to, to use that, you know, use their data well, um, archive it responsibly, and ideally reuse it rather than go out and collect it all again. So I wanted to give you a, a short a short description of, of the journal. We publish short data papers which are cross-linked to and cite data sets that have been deposited elsewhere in an approved data center. So there's, there's two um, pieces to that. There's a data paper in the data journal and there's a data set in a separate repository, and we just link. Um, and it's a CCBY license, certainly for the data paper, and it's whatever the license situation is for that data center. But normally, we'd, we'd expect it to be open. And a data article, there's a description there. Um, of, you know, it could be put software, it, it could be, um, you know, it could, it could have other um, additions, but basically, it's, it's a description. It's, it gives people the when, how, why the data were collected and what the data product actually is, ideally um, supporting and the reuse and giving people enough metadata that they can find what they're looking for. So um, this is a, a, a typical splash page. This is a, a front page of one of the articles. I want to just draw your attention to the fact that the DOI for the article, the data paper, is there, and the DOI for the data set is there on the front page as well. Um, we thought it was important that their, their um, relative you know, importance be, be illustrated by them both being right at the front of the page. Um, although we also have put the data set, um, we stipulated that needs to be part of the reference list um, as well, because we're very mindful of the fact that um, Thompson ISI, for instance, um, are setting up a data citation index. And, um, and however that eventually um, pans out, we want to make sure that, that, that citations to data sets in this title and in all our titles um, and can, be, can be collected and counted and, and give people the correct amount of, of credit. So it's a different sort of journal and, um, and actually it's involved, we also realized that we needed a different sort of editor, a different sort of editorial board from, from the general kind of academic experts that uh, I'm certainly been my, my pleasure to deal with today. So Dr. Rob Allen is an academic expert. He's a science officer at the Met Office. He's also a project manager for a historical data rescue project, um, which as you can see, it, for climate reanalysis, there's a direct scientific purpose to this, this project, but it is also a case of, of um, finding old log books and digitizing them and um, you know, trying to make them discoverable to people and, and so, you know, just, just reinterpret things, bring, bring things into the, into the scholarly canon, if you like. Um, I've also give, puts up some of the um, editorial board members as well there. So you see Sarah Callahan, um, top of the list, alphabetical. Um, again, just to, to show that, um, you know, where it was, we, we do have people who've got um, atmospheric, geological, whatever, um, you know, geoscience um, expertise. We were also looking for people that have information management expertise that can that can um, help with with um, just breaking down the boundaries. I think between the researchers and the, the journal and the data centres, and, uh, and basically support support this mission, support the workflows that are going to be required. Okay, so because there there are issues, you can see there that's the the workflow. On the left, you've got the um, repository half of a of the workflow, and on the right you've got the journal part of the, the workflow for these two um, pieces, the, the data set again, and the, the data paper, and, um, and it is complicated, I think from, from our point of view certainly. Um, we realised that um, you know, every data centre has a slightly different workflow, and that means that we were trying to think, well, how do we, how do we adapt our workflow for the, you know, to take this into account? Um, we also had needed to make sure that we could we could trust um, the repositories that we were working with. There are some um, there are things like the data seal of approval. There's data site. There are organisations that that um, cope with this already, but um, again, not necessarily in a journal context. So again, we, I mentioned the peer review, um, and people who who have worked with journals know that the reviewers, referees. Um, already have a lot asked of them every time they review a, a primary research article. Um, the, the scientific peer review of data felt very important, but it also needs to be um, a kind of realistic ask. And we want, people also need to know what it is they're being asked to do. 
and, um, and engagement we also felt. Um, and again, it's, it's um, something that those of us who keep an eye on what's going on in the policy circles are aware that this, this is coming, that, that people are going, to, are going to have to redecide how they, how they behave with their data sets. But the, you know, the, the researcher that's working off there, you know, <laughs> working extremely hard, got no time to really think about it. It's just in this treadmill of proposals and research and publication output. Um, they, they need to have the information um, given to them in a way that, that's palatable, that they can actually cope with at the right time. So it felt it all boiled down to the fact that um, unlike a, a usual journal where the, um, the publisher can take responsibility for, for managing all of the kind of content processes, this is very much a, a joint venture and it's, um, it's one that you need to undertake with a number of partners if, as, as we want to, you want to work with um, a number of data centers. So um, we set up a project, which I thought actually um, might have already come up today, but lucky me I get to mention it. Um, so prepared, peer review for the publication and accreditation of research data in the earth sciences. Um, the project manager is Sarah Callahan, um, which lucky for us. And um, these are some of the main um, principles that, that we're investigating and reporting back on. The um, project will actually be finishing towards the end of next month, um, although we, we might well spend some extra time um, sort of processing and reporting on some of the, some of the um, findings and, and other things that have come out of it. Um, let's have a think. Um, that's probably all we need to say about that at the moment. Um, and I also wanted to, actually, page up. I did also want to just draw attention to the, the footer at the bottom there, so that, that's all the, uh, the key partners. I know the DCC is represented here today as well. Um, we've got the faculty of a thousand, so we've actually got a competitor publisher um, working cooperatively, which, which also felt important. Um, we've got a couple of international um, collaborators, we've got the California Digital Libraries, and also NCAR, which is the National Center for Atmospheric Research in Colorado. Um, as well as as well as um, JISC, who are the who are the initial funder, and um, and some universities in the UK, so it's it's a, it's a group of quite diverse um, stakeholders who have been trying to to um, you know bring pull together some some recommendations and some best practices around data publishing, and um, I've put the website up at the end of this presentation for, for people to pick up if they want. Um, I did also want to mention um, the George project. I don't think anyone is. So here's that need today to talk about that. It's a sister project funded from the same strand. Um, and you see that the, the mission has been to, to collate and summarize um, journal data policies. Um, and the fact is, the fact I think that somebody felt the need to do that, um, the fact, and also the fact that when they, when they went through this um, exercise, I think under half of the journals that they, they looked at actually had a, a research data policy. Um, I think it points to the fact, again, that we're in time of great transition um, and that people aren't going to be able to just send a submission to a journal in the future. They're going to have to, someone's going to have, done, have to have done the research to make sure that what they're sending through is, is going to be appropriate and going to be acceptable. Um, and I think, again, that, that's something that, that could be um, supported within the institution. So I wanted to give you some, some other sort of tips for, for, for going forward. There's our, our project site. Um, as I said, we're quite near the end of the project now. We do have one more workshop um, next month at the British Library. Um, I'm not sure, there might be one or two spaces left if anyone's um, able to, to come and um, participate. We're actually looking at the peer review guidelines, which we've already put together and I'm um, trying to, to come to a final conclusion. Um, there's a GISC mailing list, data-publication at gismail.ac.uk. Um, and that's not specifically linked to the, to the project. It's, it's around the data publication issue. And it's got a lot of, um, uh, it's quite international. It's got um, people just posting into like local meetings. And we're trying, we've been quite um, active recently talking about um, peer review and um, you know, repository accreditation, for instance. So um, it's, it's quite a nice one to join just to kind of keep informed. Um, the Research Data Alliance um, has also got a mailing list. Um, and there's also, in its, in its early days, um, in the process of setting up working groups and task groups to, um, to investigate and, and deliver back on various um, research data issues. So again, if you w look at the site, if there are any working groups that, that interest you, I'd encourage you to, to make contact with people. 
Um, I've also just mentioned the World Data System. Um, there's another organization which is, which is looking to um, promote best practice and stewardship of, of research data. Um, there's, there's a, no, you, can, you can join, you can become a member, or you can, you can just, again, um, simply monitor um, the communications um, and so forth that are coming out of that, and I think some of those are, are going to be quite interesting. So a, slight, um, uh, a slightly different um, quote, I think, the one I heard earlier, um, Jeffrey Bolton again. Um, and it's quite a, that's quite a strong statement. I think it's, it's something to aspire to, um, that, it, that it's, um, it's at the very least it's good practice to make sure that um, people can find what's, what's underlying um, in order to, to um, verify conclusions and, and promote transparency. And thank you very much. Mm. Mm. Okay, thank you, Fiona. Any questions? <laughs> Actually, it's the same question I asked before, I think, uh, one of them. Um, it's interesting uh, the, the view of the publisher. So my question is, so you have these links, the DOIs, the data sets in your articles online. What about in the metadata that we harvest in our, discover, in our library discovery tools? Are they also available there so we can use, use them in, in our front end? The, the metadata for the, from the, um, the DOIs, from the, from the data sets? So, sorry. Metadata of the, for the articles that we traditionally, for the pub uh, that we traditionally um, publish. Uh, okay, the um, Geoscience Data Journal, my, my, my journal, our journal, um, is published with a CCBY license. So I'm, not, I'm not interested in license, I'm interested in meta the metadata. Maybe I, di I didn't um, phrase it quite well. But so we, uh, at, at li libraries, we harvest mm. metadata. We, don't, we have our own, for instance, integrate. I'm, I'm I'm to use some of these bullshit bingo words now. Uh, unified integrated discovery tool front end, that's maybe five, where we, pr where we present uh, the, the, the metadata of the articles that we have access to at the university. And people can then find a link to the full text, but I, I would like to have also a link to the data set in these, de in these harvested metadata. Traditionally, this, this is not the case because we haven't had this until now. Uh, but my question now is, do you as a, as a publisher also provide that additional metadata fields, the links to the data sets, to uh, the third, third party or local uh, okay, presentation Okay, we're not layer? systematic, this is the, yeah. Um, we're not systematically um, providing any feeds at the moment, um, although um, we have had a couple of preliminary conversations with, say, Open Air. Um, if you wanted to talk to me about that like, at lunch or afterwards, then we, we could certainly discuss it. Does that help? I already have a lunch appointment, but maybe later. <laughs> yes. Send me an email. <laughs> Any other questions yeah. before we end for lunch? Oh. Hi, it's Robin Rice from the University of Edinburgh. Um, it, it just occurs to me regarding that previous question that it is a data journal, so the paper, something to keep in mind is the item itself is, is the data in this case, although I think your question probably applies to a more traditional journal. Um, but, sorry, so my question <laughs> um, was about the, the, I don't know if it's, I don't know if you'll consider it a fair question, because again, it's, your data journal is not like a regular journal, but I'm, I can't help thinking about regular journals and the increasing maybe um, either trend or not trend, like a debate whether to do peer review of data in, in the normal scholarly communication outside of data journals and how you think, um, how similar or different the process is because some of the things you mentioned in terms of peer review of data sets such as you know making sure variables work and you know all of that kind of thing I would have thought would be analogous to what the editor does in a journal not the peer review committee you know because if, if I do peer review and I'm correcting typos that's kind of like that's not a good use of my mm. say scientific expertise not that I have scientific expertise but um, so is there an analogy there I know y you have a special editorial board that's willing to look into data. Well, certainly advice, yes. I, I know that peer review is considered time consuming as it is, and it's, you know, I know mm -hmm. it's said that it's not a good mechanism to count, to capture fraud, for example, because they can't look at the data hard. 
So I was just wondering, you know, where you, it, like I said, it might not be fair, but where do you see the peer review going in the traditional journal process, where, mm -hmm. where at least the data set is being asked to be made available? Okay. Um, there's quite a lot there, isn't there? Um, I guess I think taking the peer review issue as a whole, um, we were inspired to investigate the peer review of the data sets because it, of this particular journal. But I agree it's something that should be extrapolated out generally, um, particularly as, as data sets, I think, will become um, you know, more regularly um, you know, linked with, with primary research publications. Um, I think that you can, you can um, sometimes look at it as almost a two-fold process. Um, where you might have, say, a, a mechanical, a machine-read um, stage, which, which simply does check that it's what it says it is, that, that there, are, there are no um, void fields, empty fields, which should be filled, um, that, you know, that, that there are no um, values which, which are beyond the parameter they should be in, that the, the file's not corrupt. Um, I think um, after that, Yes, that there, there, are, there are issues about you know, what's humanly possible, um, and that's going to vary from, from community to community because of you know, various levels of complexity. Um, sometimes people will need um, specific software um, in order to be able to, to read something. Um, so, you know, we might get things in different formats, some of which have been partly digested and some of which are more raw. Um, and that's part of, of what we're trying to do in pulling together the, the, the peer review guidelines for data, which is the, you know, the piece that we're literally on at the moment. Um, so I, I would say, um, do please have a, have a look at the website because we're actually um, we're in the process still of consulting. Um, there is a document there which, which I'm very, very happy to get um, feedback on. Okay, <laughs> thank you, Fiona. We'll stop here, uh, it's time for lunch now. Um, thank you again, mm -hmm. all the speakers of uh, this morning, uh, for your presentations. <laughs> Lots of things to discuss during lunch. Uh, we start again at a quarter to two, uh, so we'll uh, see each other then here. I would just would like to ask the speakers who haven't given their presentations yet to come here so that we can upload them. <laughs>